Okay, so today I want to talk about object prototypes in JavaScript, what prototypes are and how they're put together. But I wanted to try and do it in a visual way. So I'm using Sketchbook here to try and sketch out what's happening with constructors and prototypes. Now this is the code that we're going to visually look at. I've got a variable and I'm passing in an object literal. So this is going to be turned into an actual object and set inside this variable. And then we're going to use a constructor function that we create ourselves. So I'm going to use the new constructor to call this function cat, create an object, and stick it inside of here. So let's look at what's happening. We'll start with the object literal first of all. Okay, so we'll create our object right here. This is going to be our my obj. So we do that, my obj, just like this. Okay, so this object, my obj, has a constructor. This is being built by something in, internally by JavaScript. So there is a constructor, and the constructor for this object literal is always going to be as if we did this, new object. So we're calling this function to create our my obj. So this constructor function is building this. Now in JavaScript with prototypes, every function has a prototype object. So this one is going to have a prototype object as well because it is a function. And this prototype up here is the object prototype. There is one root object prototype that is sort of at the top of this prototype chain. So we have my obj, our object literal. It has a constructor function that builds it. When you just write those curly braces, there's actually a call happening to new object. It is building this object. Because it's a function, it gets a prototype object. So we have this object prototype here. This is an object, and it is connected to null. So our, pro our prototype chain, this object, if we went up the prototype chain, we'd be connected with null. This object down here also has a prototype that it can access. Now, the prototype belongs to its constructor. So there is a connection that we can use to get from my obj up to this prototype, and there's a property it's a non-standard property, but all the browsers have it, called proto, like this. So dunder proto, double underscore proto, is what this is called. Every object has a property called dunder proto. This proto property connects with the prototype. The prototype, which belongs to the constructor that built the object. So we have this little triangular thing happening. With every object that you ever build, your object will have a constructor, and it will also have a connection to the prototype that belongs to that constructor. The proto property will link us to this. Now this object up here has a proto property as well, and it points to null. So in here, if we were to get a variable that held the object prototype, and then we said, what's your proto property? It would point to null. Okay, so that's your basic average everyday object. When you use an object literal over here to create it, this is what's happening. Now the constructor function. Well, the same sort of thing is happening. We're creating a new object called kitty, or at least that's the name that we're giving it. So right down here, this is kitty. Now kitty has a constructor function. Its constructor function in our example here is called cat. So we're saying new cat, we're calling the constructor function. That's what this is, the constructor function that builds kitty. Now, because it's a function, that means it has a prototype property. So this is the cat prototype. Like that. So there's the cat prototype that belongs to the constructor that built kitty. So this function cat has a prototype cat, and kitty, if it wanted to connect with it, right here, we could use the property 
Dunder Proto. That's what connects Kitty with this prototype. And JavaScript uses this prototype chain. So if Kitty, in our code, if we were to say Kitty dot some method, whatever the function or method is called, JavaScript will look inside of this object and say, do you have that property or method? No? Okay. I will now go up your prototype chain to see if it's existing inside of here. If it doesn't exist inside of here, well, you know what? This object, it's just another object, which means it has a proto property. And where does this one go? Well, it is just a generic object, kind of like the one that we did over here. So if this one points to the object prototype, that means that our one over here, cat prototype, it also is going to connect. So we can know for certain that this is going to connect all the way over here, like this. So we have cat prototype, which was a prototype object connected to our constructor. We don't have to do anything to create this, it just exists. So we have our object, kitty. Kitty is using this function cat as its constructor. It is going to have a prototype object. So kitty can get to the prototype through this. If we need to get there ourselves, JavaScript will just on its own, if we try to access a method that doesn't exist inside kitty, it will look here. If it doesn't exist inside here, it continues up this proto chain all the way up until the top with null. And we can create our own chains. We can build our own inheritance by basically just constructing this proto chain. And we can use a couple of methods in JavaScript. There's one called set prototype of and get prototype of. We can use those methods to either find out what the proto object is or to denote some sort of inheritance. We can say, you know what? This cat prototype, it's going to use some other object as its prototype. And then that object is going to use another one as its prototype. And then that one eventually will chain up with object. When we get to the point where we're no longer intentionally setting a prototype, this is going to be the next step. Because whenever we stop, whatever the top object is, it's automatically going to be using new object as its constructor. So it's going to use the object prototype to get up to here. So that's visually what's happening. And just to reinforce this and prove that this is happening, if we jump in here, here's our code. I want to look and see, okay, fine. Inside of, I'm gonna just make my shortcut here to this because I'm gonna write writing a few log statements. There we go. So for my obj, if I say I want to know, okay, my obj, who is your constructor? Or who is your proto? There we go. Now, if I run this, there we go. Function object, and then just an object. Constructor. Well, the function object, that is this. Function object. It's the function called object. This is the thing that's building this. When we use an object literal, we're calling new object like that. So this is the function that we're calling. This is the constructor. It has a prototype property, which would be the same as this. They're saying it's just the plain object. So let's test this. Let's say, okay, is that the exact same thing as my dot constructor dot prototype? So you can see objects have this dunder proto, functions have a property that's actually called prototype. They're two different keywords, but they're doing the same thing. This is pointing to the prototype object of the constructor, and so is this. So if I test this, we clear that out and run it again. True, they are the exact same thing. And if I did the same thing down here, so we'll comment these out, kitty. Well, kitty is going to have a proto property. Let's log this out. And that should be the same thing as the cat prototype. 
So cat dot prototype. Those two should be the same thing. If we clear this out, run it again. True. Yes, they are the same thing. Okay. So kitty has a constructor function. The constructor function has a prototype. The prototype of cat's prototype should be this object. So kitty dot proto, which is the prototype that belongs to cat. We know that these are the exact same thing. I could have written either of these things. Then the prototype of it, there we go. That is the same thing as what we had up here. It is my obj constructor prototype. It is the prototype that belongs to this top level object. So does that mean that object.prototype is the same thing? Yes, it is. And then the prototype of, or the proto rather, of the object prototype, because object.prototype is an object, it's not a function. If we said object.prototype, and then we asked for its proto, what is the next thing up the prototype chain? That should give us the null. And there it is. So this is the top thing on the prototype chain. Looking back into here, Kitty uses this constructor, which has a prototype. So we were able to use the cat prototype and then linking from here up to object prototype. And then its proto property is null. And that's it. That is visually what is going on with prototypes in JavaScript. If you want to insert something else inside of here, if you want to make another layer, let's say I wanted to make an animal object and the animal object was the prototype of the cat object. We could do that as well. We could create in here. Uh, let's comment these ones out. Let's say we've got a function called animal. And we want that to be sort of up the chain from cat. Fair enough. So I've got an animal. Now I want cat to know that it's supposed to go up the chain. So we can say object dot set prototype of. So cat's prototype, its prototype is going to be animal dot prototype because we are defining what is the next thing up the chain from this. So cat's prototype is going to be the animal prototype. That's how we move up the chain. So let's log out the chain from this point. So we have our kitty object and we want to know who its proto is. And then we'll go right up the chain here. So I'll just keep adding these on. There we go. So moving up the chain from our kitty, its proto should be the cat prototype. Then the prototype of this should be the animal prototype. The prototype of that should be the object prototype and the prototype of that should be null. So this is our cat object and we'll just run it. There we go. So there's our cat object. Here's our animal object. Just the object object. And then at the very top of the chain, we have null, just like that. And that's what we're building here is just these little dotted lines that is the proto chain that goes all the way up to null, regardless of how many steps you inject inside there and whatever hierarchy and inheritance you define with these prototypes, you are still working with these little triangular shapes where you've got an object, it's got a constructor, the constructor has a prototype, but you can get to that prototype through the proto property. And the proto property is really just defining what JavaScript does when it's looking to execute your code. It will follow that prototype chain all the way to the top, looking for the method or property that you're referring to in your code. And it's only when it gets to that very top, when it gets to the null that it knows, you know what? I couldn't find that property. I couldn't find that method. So now I'm going to tell you, hey, there's a reference error. I don't know what this thing is that you were talking about. All right. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.